Buddy? That, you know, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. We so we're going to invite you to sing with us. And you're going to get to sing a little later. praise team. Good morning and welcome to Worship of St. Luke's. I am Pastor Jeremy uh, and I just want to say welcome. Uh, we're starting uh, our or we're continuing our Reconnect sermon series and today we're talking about reconnecting with our core values, specifically acceptance and hospitality. Y'all can sit down. Y'all have to sit right back up. Stand right back up, but y'all can sit down. Uh, um, so we are talking today in, in our Reconnect sermon series about acceptance and hospitality, two things that are super important to us here. Um, also, I want to remind you to fill out your Connect card. Speaking of connection, it's how we know we're here. It's how we know you're here. It's how we know how to pray for you and how we know how to get you to, uh, connected with ministries at St. Luke's that speak to your heart. But we also want to start worship today with some really good news, and that's that St. Lucas, John and Kelsey, and I'm sorry, and uh, Chelsea Mason, I should know St. Lucas, John and Chelsea uh, Mason welcomed their daughter, Kinsley Lynn Mason, on August 16th. Uh, and so we want to congratulate them and make sure that we keep them in our prayers moving forward. Like I told you, uh, she is beautiful. Look at her. But like I said, you have to stand right back up. So let's stand and call ourselves to worship. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in this morning's call to worship. 
When Jesus is born to Mary and Joseph, God is there showing us love. When Jesus is presented at the temple, God is there showing us acceptance. When Simeon holds Jesus in his arms, God is there showing us Christ's purpose. When Anna recognizes Jesus in the temple, God, God is, is there, there showing, showing us hospitality. This very morning, God, God is, is here offering us grace. And in the future we cannot see, God, God is there showing us the way. Let, Let us worship God. God. Amen. Come on, y'all. There is a river where goodness flows. It's over fountain that drowns sorrow. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. We sing bursting. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river.
please join us in this morning's prayer. God who speaks words of blessing and purpose over us, give us grace to receive those words. Let us hear your voice of love, your voice of calling, and your voice of guidance as we claim the goodness within us. Let us be people who see that Jesus came for all people, even us. Amen. I can be real with you. Say anything and not be afraid. You made me and you like what you made. You made me and you don't make mistakes. I can be real with you. You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything. There's room at your table for me. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. It's me. It's me, it's me, you love me. I know you're proud of me, even though I don't deserve it sometimes. No, I'm not a perfect child. I still make my father smile. I know you're proud of me. You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything there's a room at your table for me I am the one you love I am the one you love you take me just as I am you choose me all over again I am the one I am the one you Sometimes, but you love me, you love me. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Proclaim his love. Your love, your love never fails, your love never fails. Fails. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Come on, somebody sing this. Come on. 
Just as I am, you choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything. There's a room at your table for me. testimony oh I've tasted and I've seen I'm a testimony your love your love never fails your love never fails your love your love never fails your love never fails hallelujah i need y'all to lift god give god a hand of praise here this morning some of y'all might need to get some coffee okay <laughs> we came to worship your love never fails god keep giving god some praise Woo! come on yeah. amen Happen. So any source of excitement, any slight change of routine, it, it meant the world to her. And so as you can imagine, it, it meant the world to her when her dad would wake her up all nights when he got back really late from work. And he'd, wait, he'd take her downstairs to watch the stars with her just right out on the front lawn. The stars sparkled brilliantly against the blackboard sky and without the pollution of city lights. They catch up, they talk about how boring their city was, and they look at the stars. He'd name the constellations and point them out and explain why they were called what they were called. And she'd scrunch up her little face and point to her forehead and focus extra hard to make sure that information never, ever left her brain. The most exciting and special night of all was when Haley's Comet came through. And if you know anything about Haley's Comet, you know that it comes through every 76 years. And it's the only comet visible to the naked eye from Earth. 
We won't see it again until the year 2061. Anyway, uh, one night her father wakes her up and hurries her downstairs. They stretch out on the lawn together and they bear witness to a genuine cosmic phenomenon as they watch the comet cross in the sky. His father, or her father, took her hand and he looked at her and he said, this only happens once every 76 years. The next time it happens, I won't be around anymore. But you will be and you will live, you will have lived a, a wonderful life by then. But no matter who you become or what happens, remember this moment. Remember how special it is. And remember that I love you. He was right, unfortunately. He wasn't around the next time the comet came around or even half the amount of that time. And by that time, his daughter had grown up. She had moved far away from home. She had a career as a teacher. She lived an entire life. And now at the age of 77, she was going to have a chance to see Haley's Comet one more time. Um, the comet that had visited last when she was only 11 years old. The comet that she had last seen with her father. The comet that she had been waiting for her whole life to feel close to her father again, to feel her father's love again. And when it came, she made her way outside. She pulled her grandchildren close. She looked up in the sky and felt the love of her father like she hadn't since she was 11. She looked at them and said, hey, this only happens every 76 years. And the next time it does, I won't be around, but you will be, and you will have lived wonderful lives by then. But no matter who you become, remember this night. Remember how special it is, and remember that I love you. I think we all know what it's like to wait at least part of our lives, if not all of our lives, for something. And that's exactly where we find Simeon, the man mentioned earlier in our call to worship, uh, in our text for worship today. Waiting, his whole life waiting for one thing. Let's read the text together and see exactly what for. Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 35 read, when the time came for the ritual cleaning in accordance with the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. It's written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice in keeping with uh, what's stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, a man named Simeon in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would, he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went into the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and he praised God and he said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared the salvation in the presence of all people. In a light, uh, it's a light for revelation for the Gentiles and a glory to your people, Israel. His father and mother were amazed by what was said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, uh, this boy is a sign to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that generates opposition so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your innermost being too. In this passage, we find Mary, Joseph, and the, baby, and the baby Jesus, both emotionally and physically exhausted, arriving at the temple in Jerusalem so that Jesus could be dedicated and cleansed, as was the law. At the time, uh, Simeon was an old prophet, and he was, led by the he was led to the temple by the Holy Spirit. He meets the couple there and finally sees the thing, rather the person he had waited his entire life for. Uh, as we just now read, God had promised Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. And there he was, the infant Jesus. He had finally seen the Messiah. He had finally seen salvation, not only for uh, himself, but for all people. He gets to hold the infant Jesus, the Messiah, in his, in his own hands against his own chest. You can see Simeon carefully and gently receiving the baby Jesus into his arms. Every time I do a baptism, I pretend I'm Simeon. But 
But he takes him into his arms and he begins to speak to God in what sound almost like his last words. He says, Master, I can die in peace now because you have fulfilled your promise to me because I've seen this little one who, who is and brings salvation, not only for your chosen people, but for the entire world. Can you imagine the camera pans over to Mary and Joseph who are just like, what? Um, but even in that moment, he continues to tell them that even with him being the Messiah, some would reject him. As we consider who we are as St. Lucas, who we are as a community, two of the first things that should come to mind are core values of acceptance and hospitality. It makes us who we are. Looking at this passage, we can learn a thing or two about these things from Simeon, uh, but we also get the answer to our question. What was Simeon waiting for? He, of course, was waiting for Jesus. He was waiting for the Messiah. In his own words, he was waiting for salvation, but not just salvation for him or his own people, for all people. And what, uh, and what does he do when he finally sees this salvation? The text tells us that he praises God. He's excited. He's overjoyed. This is our first lesson. The acceptance of hospitality we show as people of faith and as St. Lucas should flow from a genuine place of joy and excitement at the mere presence of others being in community with us. Yes, those that we know and love. Oh, my sermon's going away. Not just for those we know and love, but for newcomers as well, especially newcomers. Many of you have shared your stories of how you came to St. Luke's with me. Many of you have told me about when you found this place here, and they're all special and unique, but uh, they usually share a common thread. At some point in your stories, you'll say the words, and that's when I knew I was home. It feels good to be at home, doesn't it? Am I here by myself? It feels good to be at home, doesn't it? <laughs> with family either bound by blood or chosen. Being a Christian means holding the needs of others in such a way that they're as important to you as your own needs. So when we show acceptance and hospitality to others, we should look at them and with the same pride and joy that allows us to say, uh, and that's how I knew it was home, I was home, look at them and say, I am so glad you're home. Amen? Going back to a point that was made earlier, Simeon emphasizes that the salvation Jesus was bringing was not just for him, and it wasn't just for his people. Uh, he talks about his salvation for the Gentiles even before he talks about how it's salvation for uh, the, uh, the Israelites. It's, it's not a salvation for the in crowd. It's not a salvation for the chosen few. The same should be true of our acceptance of hospitality. It should be available to and lavished upon all freely. Acceptance is more than saying all are welcome here. It's saying that, genuinely meaning it, and then behaving in such a way that makes that statement true. And hospitality pushes that even further. Hospitality isn't just saying, hospitality isn't just saying, uh, isn't just making a space comfortable. It's making a space safe. Amen? It's not about clean linens and freshly baked cookies, even though these things can be expressions of hospitality. It's about making sure that people feel known and seen and heard in a world that has an invested interest in making people feel none of those things. Has anybody in this room ever felt invisible? Hmm. And the only way to do that is an intentional continued effort to acknowledge the full personhood and identity of each and every person we welcome. Looking again at Simeon, he gives us a perfect example as he balances the nuance of who Jesus is in that moment. Uh, he gently takes him into his arms because he is a baby but he calls him salvation because he is the Messiah. Let's just ponder for a second the paradoxical nature of Simon making sure to support the neck of God himself because he can't hold it up yet. Hmm. Wow. Keeping in, in, in that same light, uh, the subtle nuances that tell the story of who each of us are, seeing each other's strengths, and weaknesses and not limiting each other to any of those things, saying yes and amen to the fact that we all come to the table with different histories, with different stories of faith, with different passions and skills, with different levels of physical ability, looking different, loving different, thinking differently. The work of acceptance and hospitality is working together to build a table that is big and long and wide and making sure that everyone has a seat and then continuing to look left and right, even as we eat, to make sure that everybody is fed. Amen? 
If we dig back into our text, we see this idea further uh, emphasized by the fact that we find Mary and Joseph at the intersection of living in poverty, but having the responsibility of caring for God himself in human flesh. We, knew, we know that they were living in poverty because they came to the temple offering turtle doves, which were the alternate offering for those who couldn't afford a lamb. Simeon welcomes and blesses this young family experiencing poverty, takes their baby into his arms and acknowledges the fullness of his identity, uh, both the joyous and difficult parts. Once again, our acceptance of hospitality should be the same. Um, you know, I think, I think back to that little girl who would watch the stars with her parents who became a woman. She waited her whole life for that comet to return so she could feel love, specifically the love of her father. And I think to Simeon waiting uh, nearby the temple his entire life to see Jesus. And then finally holding Jesus in his arms and seeing salvation. And I don't know what we all collectively have been waiting for our whole lives, but what I do know is that there are people who have been waiting their whole, li- their whole lives to be in a community where they feel accepted and where they feel like they're at home. And what I also know is that they shouldn't have to wait their whole lives. What I know is that if we take up the responsibility, both individually and as the church, of living into who we're called to be, those people will know that they're loved. And we can say to them, um, hey, this gathering of community happens every week, not every 67 years, not every once in a lifetime like a birth, uh, but remember that each of these gatherings is special. Each of these times we get to come into worship together is a moment that we'll never get back. And no matter who you are, and no matter who you've been, you are loved. Um, As we move into our time of giving, I want to keep with that idea of waiting that idea that that we don't have to wait our whole lives to be accepted, and we don't have to wait our whole lives to give all that we can so that people can be accepted either. Um, As our ushers come forward, let's prepare our hearts to give. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days i've been held in your hands from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will sing of the goodness of god Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire The darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is 
life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful God of grace, who knows us in all our wanting, who knows what we're waiting for, well, we come to you saying thank you for your presence with us here today, for the fact that we can call this home, for the fact that we, in this moment, are surrounded by friends and family, some of whom we don't even know yet. We pray for those who have not yet found home. Uh, who have not yet found love and compassion and, and the healing that they've been waiting for their whole lives. May we be love in this world. May we be grace and gentle care. Empower our hearts for caring and our hands for serving. And uh, Now, O oh Lord, we pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue standing for our concluding song. Amen. This morning, everybody. We're going to sing this song, okay? Wait, come on. Now, y'all wake up. My goodness. I'm going to go back to bed. It was, hey, I can praise him from bedside. No, come back. Come back. Where you going? Come back. Okay. Come, back. come on. I know who I am. Let's sing this this morning. You ready? Come on. Get those hands together. You guys know this one. Come on. I know who I am. Sing it if you know it. I know who I know who I am. Whoa. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. And you are.
blind. What happened? And you gave me sight. You put a song of praise in me. There's, there's some more to the story. Come on, tell him. Whoa, well, I was broken. What happened next? And you healed me. You were dying. I was dying. Come on. And you gave me life. Lord, you are my identity. Come on, let's, let's take it down just a little bit. I know. I know. Come on, tell what you know. I know. Come on, if you know, let's sing this out. I know. Come on. I know who I am. I know who I am. Come on. I know who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know. Who I am. I know I am accepted. Guess what? I know who I am. I know who I am. I am secure. Yeah. I'm confident. Then I am loved. Yes. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am, I am alive. I am set free. Thank you to our praise team this morning. I'm thankful that God always moves through them. Um, uh, lift your faces and receive this benediction, friends. Um, as our benediction, I have this postcard, the first postcard St. Luke's ever sent out 43 years ago to let people know that we're here as a community of love. And it says, St. Luke's United Methodist Church is a community of people just like you with strengths and weaknesses, joys, and problems who believe that God loves and accepts us as we are. He offers us the possibility of new life and hope. And as our benediction, I just say, go and be that church. Amen. The Lord bless.